Good morning. Welcome to worship here at St. John's this morning. We are continuing our sermon series entitled The King Shall Come. And our, our more narrow focus today is The King Shall Come and He is bringing perfect joy. And we'll be looking at a section from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah in the sermon today. Everything that you need for worship is on the screens or in the bulletin that you received. Please take a moment during the service to fill out the connect card so that do have a record of your visit, and you can just place that in the offering plate as that is passed. Um, may the Lord bless our time together. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sin the Lord does not count against them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, 
and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He was delivered over to death for our sins. Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Let us pray. Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus Christ, and come with the good news of your mighty deliverance. Drive the darkness from our hearts and fill us with your light, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61. This also serves as the basis for our message this morning. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the pr prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. 
This is the word of the Lord. The second reading comes from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Uh, We can cherish the message that comes from God's word. The message prepares you for the real joy that God wants you to have at Christmas. Paul writes, Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. Our gospel lesson comes from from John, from select verses. Uh, We often hear the question around this time of year, what do you want for Christmas? To which I would respond, I don't know. Um, Well, John the Baptist prepares the way for people to see a Savior, a message that they didn't necessarily always want or even know that they needed, but this is one that they truly needed. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. We join together in confessing the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the day. You may be seated.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As Pastor Walter mentioned, the message today is based on the Old Testament reading, the first lesson from Isaiah 61. We begin with prayer. Lord, bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts. May they be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends in Jesus, our Savior. The words joy and Christmas just seem to kind of belong together, don't they? What is it that, that gives you the greatest joy this time of year? Is it finding that, that perfect gift for, for one of your loved ones that, that you cherish so much? Is it the Christmas decorations inside the house, out on the front lawn, Christmas lights, or is it the, the Christmas gatherings that you're able to have with your family? At the same time, what is it that robs you of joy this time of year? Is it the family member who fails to fill out their Christmas list and so you don't know what the perfect gift is for them? Or is it trying to figure out where you store your Christmas decorations only to find that half of the lights don't work when you do find them? Is it not being able to meet with family and gather with them because of distance or, or schedules? Sometimes the very things that we think are going to bring us the greatest joy cause us the greatest frustration. And maybe that's because we, we often focus on th the wrong things as our source of, of real joy. So today we continue that sermon series, The King Shall Come, and we're reminded today through Isaiah that he is bringing joy. Joy that we are, are clothed in Christ's righteousness and joy that we are clothed for his service. Today God, through the prophet Isaiah, speaks to us about this joy as he alludes to something called the year of Jubilee in the Old Testament. You ever heard of that? The year of Jubilee? What's that? Well, the year of Jubilee is even better than Christmas. Really? Can anything be better than Christmas? I mean, at Christmas, you get all kinds of stuff for free. What could be better, to, better than that? Well, sure, you do receive a lot of gifts at Christmas, but you also buy gifts, don't you? And if so, what's your budget for Christmas this year, may I ask? I'd venture a guess that for families, uh, we spend more money this time of year than, than any other time of year. And as a result, the excitement of Christmas is then soon followed by the dread of the January credit card bill. Wouldn't it be great if January could be declared no bill month? Huh? As long as we're dreaming here, wouldn't it be great if every January you got, got your credit card bill and it had the word pay stamped on the statement? Well, in the Old Testament, God commanded his people to do something just like that. Every seventh year was meant to be a Sabbath year. And so all of the debts that had been accru accumulated during the previous seven years, they were to be canceled. And then every 50th year, they were to do the same thing. And it was called the year of Jubilee. And it was meant to provide God's people with, with restored freedoms. And so land was returned to the original own owners. Slaves were to be set free. Loans were to be, to be written off. It was called the year of jubilee after the Hebrew word yobel, which means horn. So at the beginning of the year, a ram's horn was to be sounded to mark or indicate to everybody that their year of freedom had begun. Now that would be worth celebrating, don't you think? That would, would bring some joy. I think you'd do a little dance if you knew that, that every January your credit card bill was going to be paid by somebody else. Unfortunately, it seems like the Israelites never really celebrated the Jubilee. People were afraid that if they didn't 
recoup the money that was owed to them, they wouldn't be able to survive the year. And so their lack of trust in God's promise to provide for them uh, caused them to miss out on the blessings that God wanted to give them through the Jubilee. But God's purpose for that year of Jubilee, it was more than just leveling the economic playing field. He wanted it to be a picture of the freedom from sin's death that Jesus debt that Jesus would bring. In fact, at the beginning of his ministry, Jesus preached on the opening verses of this section from Isaiah. And he made it very clear that these words are a prophecy about him. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. In those verses, Isaiah alludes to that year of jubilee, calling it the year of the Lord's favor. In what way has Jesus brought us freedom from death? Well, I don't think I'm ever going to have enough money to buy my own private tropical island. I'm okay with that. I've come to terms with that. Um, if I can visit such a place, maybe a couple of times, I've been to Antigua a couple of times, um, I'm happy with that. But the same can't be true, can't be said of, of heaven. If we don't have what it takes to buy a spot in heaven, then we're never going to see it. We're never going to be allowed to, to bask under God's unfiltered love, but rather we will be burning under the glare of his anger in hell. So what does it cost to own a piece of heaven? Well, here's an inkling. No smart aleck comments about your teacher's clothes. No unflattering remarks about your co-worker. No disregarding God's word because you don't really like what it says. No ignoring somebody else's pain, but doing whatever you can to alleviate the suffering. In short, the price tag for a piece of heaven is being unselfish every second of your life. And so if you've, if you've ever... Um, ripped a toy out of the hands of a brother or sister, if you've ever bent the truth when you're dealing with a customer, if you ever grumbled and complained when you had to get down on your hands and knees to clean up somebody else's mess, well, then you don't have what it takes to buy a piece of heaven, but you have carved out a place for yourself in hell. And that's why Jesus' announcement is better than a credit card company calling you up and telling you in January that they've paid for all of your December purchases. Jesus came to announce freedom from all sin. And on the cross, he paid the debt of hell that, that we owe. And he gives you and me the credit for his perfect life. And in essence, he's telling us that our future sins, too, have been paid for. Can you imagine living with a credit card company like that? Not only do they, they call you up and, and they tell you that, that these purchases have been paid for from these odd months, but they also promise you that all of your future purchases are going to be paid for as well. Would you ever have to worry again about having enough money to, to heat your house or to put food on the table? Would you ever have to be anxious again about the amount it's going to cost to repair your vehicle? No. The credit card company is going to take care of those charges for you. That's the kind of freedom from sin that Jesus brings. The prophet explains it this way, or describes it this way. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Jesus the King brings perfect joy because he clothes us in his perfect righteousness. 
And you see this garment of salvation that Isaiah describes, it's no regular hand-me-down. I mean, hand-me-downs, they're great. They don't cost you a thing, but usually they're a little bit scuffed up, and often they don't fit real well, do they? But this garment of salvation, it's not scuffed by sin, and it fits you and me perfectly, which means that not a single one of our sins is exposed to our Heavenly Father's examination. Now, some people might hear that and say, well, with that kind of coverage... We can do whatever we want, and we're still guaranteed heaven. But that's not the picture that the prophet Isaiah gives. He compares us to a bride and a groom, all dressed up for their wedding day. And I've, I've yet to see a groom all, all dressed up in his brand new suit that he bought for his wedding, and, and the bride is wearing her beautiful wedding gown. I've never seen them carelessly walk through a mud puddle on the way to their wedding. So no, Jesus has not clothed us in his forgiveness so that we can selfishly sin more. He's clothed us in his righteousness, not only to save us, but also so that we might serve in joy. Isaiah says it this way, They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. I don't suppose many brides would like being compared to a tree. But God's point here is that we believers are no puny shrubs that, that hardly make an impression on the people who pass by us. God has saved us to be mighty oaks. He wants people to take notice of us and the peace with which you live and the purpose that you have. And the service that you freely offer. Because when they see those things, then they're seeing God's glory. And we need to be reminded of that, especially this time of year. That we have been saved for service, not from service. The story is told about a little boy who was tearing through his presence on Christmas morning. And he was really just following the lead of everybody else in the house. They're all doing the same thing. And then suddenly his eye caught the manger scene in the family living room. And he stared for a couple of seconds at, at the baby Jesus lying in the manger. And then he, then he looked around at all the, the wrapping paper that was on the floor. And he asked, whose birthday is it anyway? You'd think that it's ours with all the gifts that we receive. But it's Jesus' birthday. So why not celebrate by giving him a gift? Don't think you have anything to contribute? Well, why don't you use a little bit of the money that you had planned to spend on gifts for others and, and give it to the Lord out of thanksgiving for the people on your Christmas list? Or if it's not a monetary gift, maybe give a gift to Jesus by, by giving yourself in service to someone else and doing that in joy as Jesus has served you. It's not a way to buy God's favor. We already have that through Jesus. But it's a way to thank him for, for freeing us from sin's debt and filling us with, with joy in knowing that. The king shall come and he's bringing perfect joy. We don't perfectly enjoy that in this side of heaven. Many things rob us of that perfect joy. But when our king comes again, we'll enjoy it perfectly. Whatever that joy leads you to do, in whatever way it leads you to do it, may part of that joy be, in some way, to share the good news of the freedom from sin's debt that Jesus brings to you and to me. And the certainty and the eternity of the Lord's favor that we have. Amen. We continue now with the prayer of the church. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Amen. 
strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Especially this morning, we continue to pray for Christy Kim's father, who continues to recover from a serious fall. We also pray for Irene Celeste's son, Ricky, who is in intensive care. And also for Mike Brewer, who begins radiation treatments for cancer this week. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. We also pray for teachers who have been called to St. John's and also from St. John's to other, another school. Matthew Redfield, who has been called to teach fifth grade next year. Nick Wraith, called to be a seventh grade teacher here at St. John's next year. And Katie Kudrin, who has been called to a different school to teach first grade. We ask you to bless them with fruitful conversations with, with those who have called them so that you may, Lord, direct them in the place that they should serve at this time. Hear us now, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this time, the offering will be gathered. Please place your Connect card in the plate as it passes by you. Also, during the offering, we will watch uh, what is called... Kids Connection. It's a video that we watch in our chapel service here at St. John's and highlights ministries of our schools throughout our church body. And we wanted you to show or to see this one because I think you'll recognize a few people. Welcome to Kids Connection. I'm Jake. And I'm Olivia. Where were you born? How about your parents and grandparents? Today, we have a very special story where we get to explore Culture Day with students from all over the world. celebrating a culture day. It's a very diverse school with many cultures and so it's the first time we've ever done this and we thought it would be a fun thing to celebrate the diversity of St. John's and how we all come together. 
through Jesus. Today is Culture Day, um, and today it's the day where people would wear their cultural clothes and they can bring their cultural food and dishes. It's like a day to share where they came from and their cultures. I was born in Burma, but I am Lisu and Chinese. But today I'm wearing Lisu, my Lisu cultural dress. My parents, they came here because they thought it was a better chance for us to have better education. So they wanted us to have a better and brighter future. I'm a Puerto Rican from Ibonito, where that is the place of, it's basically the town of flowers, so that's why my hat has flowers on it. I just want to teach other people how I feel, basically. I'm very proud of being a Puerto Rican. I think it's an amazing thing. I was originally from Burma, Hakka Chen. I moved here in like 2017. When I came to this school, it was very, it was a very small school. And then just more and more people come, and many people don't know Jesus coming here. But through, like, the Holy Spirit works faith in their hearts, and now we all know Jesus as our Savior. We are separated by our different cultures and our uniqueness, but we are brought together in Christ. He is the Savior of all, and he sets the tone for our lives to then go out into the world and make a difference with all the other people that we will meet. I like this school because like the teachers, they're very, like they're good teachers. They understand us and they care, they actually care about us. This school gave me so much more opportunities because it taught me a lot more about Jesus and also about like my education. I think that is mainly important, sharing the word of God, first of all, because we want to all see each other in heaven. We want to all be one family, treat each other equally. Okay, so you can draw you in your shorts. I have many friends here. They're very kind. And we can always learn about Jesus every day when we come here. I think it's super important because we should always put God first. And this school does that every single day. You know, we start off with religion class and that's a good way to start the day. It's amazing to see everybody here to be around as many people that believe in the same thing I believe, it's amazing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should give thanks to you, Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared when he called people to repentance and pointed to Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. This true body and blood strengthen you and preserve you until life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, Gracious Lord, your word says to us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We joyfully give you thanks for the blessings offered to us in the body and blood of our Savior. May we go forth to witness to others of the wonders he has done. We pray in the name of our coming King, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning once again. Glad you could join us for worship. Christmas is, is coming soon, you guys. It is coming soon. And speaking of which, um, in our morning, uh, Sunday morning Bible classes, um, you can join us for this is kind of a special Bible study as we are looking at Messianic expectations. Um, on, we'll, we'll talk about it more here, but you can meet in church like we normally do here. We're going to watch a video first, um, and then we'll, we'll break out into our small groups like you normally do, but it'll be kind of a, a standalone uh, Bible class today. Um, as always, you're always in, um, invited to, to come and join us in our midweek Advent worship services um, at 345 on Wednesdays, and then there's usually a, a little fellowship meal uh, that follows. Um, just a reminder with the, the pickup procedure after school, just please to uh, arrive after 335. That's like the earliest. I don't know if it says it up there now. No, um, so just remember not to arrive, yeah, until 3.35. Next week, um, next week's Sunday, we're going to be doing our, our lessons and carols service, which is, you know, people always look forward to that one. That's always fun to, to hear the, the um, lessons pointing to, to Jesus and singing some Christmas songs. Next week, between the services, uh, we'll be having a voters meeting um, at 9.30, uh, it won't be a, a, a crazy long uh, voters meeting, and we're also going to be having a uh, Zambia mission trip presentation. The Hargraves, Jamel and Joanna, are going to be going there next summer for a mission trip. So uh, you can stick around for the voters meeting and to hear a little bit more about um, their trip that could, they're going to be taking. And a little bookend here, as I started with Bible class, we'll end with Bible class. So... Although the, your bookmark might say, your bookmark might say for this week to, to read chapter 22, which is the Christmas one, we're doing, Christ, we're doing Messianic Expectations this week, and then next time we join uh, together, you can read uh, chapter 22. So read chapter two, 22, which is the Christmas uh, chapter for December 17th. Otherwise, God's blessings on the rest of your day. Uh, we get to, to celebrate the, the joy that God has given to us knowing that we have a Savior um, and how amazing that is as we look forward to Christmas. May God bless the rest of your day.